space closely is Mark Bailey from Fig Securities. He joins us live now via Sydney. Mark, good morning to you. Certainly when it comes to Greece, we're seeing a positive spin being placed on these talks and on this uh, reported deal, but will it be a positive result more importantly? Yeah, good morning, Nathalie. I think that's exactly right. You know, there's a lot of hope again, you know, hopeful words as uh, the reporter announced and uh, Cyprus uh, talked about. And again, you know, I think there's, there's two major points of difference, I think, in terms of the, the uh, outcome of, of growth forecasts. I think the EU and Greece itself is probably a lot more optimistic than, uh, than the um, IMF uh, in terms of where 2017 growth will come out. And also, they're still disagreeing about how to um, negotiate the debt relief. Germany and the uh, EU is uh, quite keen just to continue to push that debt further into the future, whereas the IMF has said that it's, it still needs to see some uh, debt relief, some debt reduction and debt haircuts uh, on the Greek debt at the moment because the levels are uh, unsustainable. They do agree, however, in terms of the, the level of primary surplus that is required uh, by 2018 of 3.5%, which is pretty aggressive. Um, but I still think that um, you know there's a long way to go in this, and it's quite interesting that they're putting this positive spin on things. In, in fact, the, the European Union member states have only agreed to the bailout as a precondition that the IMF is involved, and that is not guaranteed. So I'm surprised about the positive spin. You, saw, you did see the reaction in the bond markets uh, last week where the two-year uh, uh, yield on the Greek bonds did drop uh, significantly below that 10% level, which it has been hovering for a while, uh, indicating that um, you know, everybody, again, thinks the Greece problem has been solved. But again, you know, as the report says, you know, there is that big um, bond redemption, 7 billion euros in July. Um, you know, the next next meeting and the package is, is hopefully going to be agreed by March. So it doesn't leave a lot of time in the meantime to get everything lined up. And I still think there is a lot more to play out in Greece. And everybody's just quite keen to, again, brush everything under the carpet and, and move on. You know, as, as the report also says, there's a lot of European elections. You've got the Dutch ones coming up. You've got Germany, France, um, you know, the political situation in Italy, as always, is, uh, is fairly volatile. So there's a lot of uh, other issues as well within Europe, and I still think that, uh, that Europe more broadly is a big risk for the global financial markets. Certainly interesting to note, we did see, as you flagged, Greek two-year yields dropping to their lowest level in a month. Uh, this coming after German Chancellor Angela Merkel signaled she is ready to support debt relief for the nation. But if we turn our attention also to um, sentiment coming through from the U.S., and again, we've seen similar activity here. Bond markets certainly uh, suggesting that U.S. equities have rallied too far and too fast. Um, and we're certainly seeing uncertainty in this space when it comes to um, the outlook for both uh, U.S. President Donald Trump and also the FOMC. Yeah, there's a, there's a huge range of um, kind of topics in there, Natalie. I mean, I guess that if you look at the equity market, I heard uh, uh, this morning that the, the U.S. equity market has had the most consecutive days uh, in, in positive territory since 1987. And we all remember what happened in 1987. So I agree that you know equities at the moment are certainly looking a bit toppy. You know price earning ratios are looking expensive. There's a lot of uncertainty, geopolitical uncertainty out there, and that's not coming through in terms of either the volatility or in the in the share price. You're seeing um, a, a lot of hope again. You know Trump is due to. Um, deliver his State of Union address on Tuesday night. There's hope that we'll get some uh, better indications in terms of some corporate tax plans, in terms of maybe some personal tax plans and also the fiscal spending. But again, I, I've got a feeling that he's going to be very scant on the details as he has been so far and that is, has a potential to disappoint the markets because I think that you're going to start to need to see some a more detail coming through. And you are seeing a few leaks here and there, but again, it's not definitive plans about how that's going to uh, progress. I mean, there's talk that you might see a draft in, in mid-March that uh, potentially goes up to Capitol Hill um, so that um, the, the senators can have a look um, at that draft then. But at the moment, we're still very thin on, on the ground in terms of details, in terms of any kind of border tax and how that's going to play out. So 
you know, I think at some stage Trump is going to have to deliver on the detail of his plans and if that doesn't happen I think you're going to see the markets kind of be disappointed and you know may, may be due uh, a bit of a pull that pullback given the uh, exuberance that we're seeing in, in, already priced in in, in, the, in terms of the, the share price at the moment. And absolutely, this is what we are watching and waiting for. Trump's State of the Union address to take place on Tuesday night. It will be our lunchtime um, here in Australia. So certainly will be um, a live item when we do get that. What happens, Mark, if we don't get hints of what this policy is likely to be? I, th I think you're going to see the markets being disappointed. I think you'll see um, equities pull back a bit. Um, you know, hopefully it'll, it'll give a, a bit of a hint in terms of where he sees the, the key issues and the key policy uh, and, and also maybe some of the timing uh, coming out as well. But at the moment, you know, he's kind of flattering to deceive, um, as I say, the detail on some of his more broader um, plans have been very scant. And I think, you know, that that will um, be reflected again in terms of the level of detail that we do get in the in the State of Union address. Um, but again, you know, if, if that happens, I think you'll probably see a bit of a pullback in equities. You may see a bit of um, continued rally in, in the bond market. And let's not forget, you know, the U.S. 10 yield, 10 year yield is kind of back at its low part of that uh, trading range around about 231. It was down six basis points on, on Friday. Um, and, you know, that was largely due to the kind of negative trading that we saw most of the day on Friday in terms of the equities, equities with just a, a late rally kind of kicking up a couple of the indices into positive territory. So I think that kind of gives you a bit of an indication that the markets and investor sentiment is very, very cautious going into um, this week and, you know, Trump and what he can potentially say. And I think if he doesn't deliver, there's a chance that he'll, uh, he'll disappoint investors. Certainly plenty to watch in the sessions ahead. Mark Bailey, a pleasure as always to have you with us. Thank you. Thanks, Natalie. Have a good day. Well, just to take viewers through some breaking news, we do.